Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Robert, and today I'm going to be talking to you about XGen and how we can use XGen to generate a dynamically moving ponytail that is braided on this girl. We're going to be using XGen with the help of Enhair to get there. So the first thing we need to do is jump over to our side view and we want to go ahead and get our base curve that the whole system is going to be um, started from or, or based on. So I'll just grab my free sketch tool and I'll just sort of draw out a simple little shape here. And that might be a little crazy. So what we're going to do is we'll jump over to the modeling menu. I'll go over to the curves and I'm just going to smooth that curve out ever so slightly. I maybe hit the G key to repeat that function one more time and we'll kind of smooth that guy out a few times there. So the next thing that I want to do is just check the parameterization of that curve. It's a good idea to make sure that your points are evenly spaced. If they weren't evenly spaced, I would use something like the curve rebuild command to go through in there and say, you know what, I want to have maybe 30 segments going down the length of that curve that are going to be all evenly spaced. So just keep that in mind that you want to have nice parameterization to your curves. It just makes everything work a little bit better. So the next step is to make this curve a dynamic curve. So we'll jump over to the FX menu. And we'll go to end here and we'll say make selected curves dynamics. We'll bring the option box up for that. So you can see that attach curves to selected surfaces is turned on. So what that does is by having the surface and the curve selected when we do this, it automatically attaches that curve to the surface so that it would go along for the ride if it was moving, which is exactly what you'd want here. So if we play this back now, obviously that curve is going to move dynamically but it's not going to collide with this piece of geometry. So the next thing we need to do is just add in a simple passive collider. So we'll say in cloth, create passive collider. Now, if we play it back, our hair comes down and it collides with the back of our girl, which is exactly what we want. So we've got our single dynamic moving curve. The next thing that we want to do is generate some passive curves that go along for the ride of that. And we want those passive curves to actually get braided. So we're going to be using the paint effects system to do that. Inside of Enhair, we have the ability to take any dynamic curve and associate it with, to a paint effects brush. So we'll just say assign paint effects brush to the hair system that's already active. If we jump over to the attribute editor for this, you can see that we now have hairs per clump. So if we put that up to something like 30 hairs per clump and we give it a clump width of something like three, you can see that we now have these passive curves that go along for the ride. And we can use this ramp widget to adjust the overall shape of that. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of puff that up a little bit, you know, something like that. And ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to braid this. So I'm going to make that a little bit thinner. Now this is something that's actually really pretty cool. For each dynamic curve, you get a follicle. And then for each follicle, you can go in here and you can turn on whether or not it's braided or not. So if we turn braiding on, it looks, it looks pretty cool. It starts to kink it up. Now, there's not a lot of control vertices in that. So it looks a little um, kind of polygonal or jaggy. So what we'll do is we'll just increase those sub steps up to something like, I don't know, 20 to get um, a nice look to that guy. So that gives me a pretty good looking braid. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll give it a little bit more width here. We'll kind of increase the width of that and make it a little fatter. So now that we've done that, if we play this back, you'll notice that those dynamically moving curves actually collide based off of that, um, that clump width, which is actually quite nice. So now we want to start to add in um, the ability for this to work with XGen. So XGen does not know how to work very well with paint effect strokes. We need to convert those paint effect strokes into something that can turn into ultimately guides inside of XGen. XGen has the ability to take NURBS curves and convert those to guides. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our paint effects hair and we're going to convert that over to NURBS curves. So if you say modify, convert, paint effects to curves, we now have exactly what we need to ultimately turn these curves into guides which are going to drive our paint effects or our X-Gen simulation or our X-Gen instance primitives. So let's go ahead and select some faces and add into this a new X-Gen description. So we'll just say uh, face and you can see that we've got a nice selection done right there. So with that done, we'll jump over to X-Gen and we're going to say X-Gen, let's create a new description. So for this guy, we're going to create splines that are going to be used, um, placed and used uh, guides and shaping guides. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. So now that we've done that, you can see that what we have is we're not really seeing anything. And that's because we haven't added any guides to our scene. So instead of using the manual place guides button, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the extra utilities, which allows me to convert curves into guides. So we're going to grab all these curves. We're going to go over to the exchange utilities and you can see there's a whole variety of them and we're going to be using the curves to guides utility. 
And there was a new option added in 2016 that says preserve dynamic link. What this means is there's a relationship between the curves and the guides and it's maintained. So if you modify the curves, the guides update. So this is really great because it allows you to have, um, in one example, you might have one set of curves driving multiple guides or driving multiple descriptions. Or in this example, we're going to have a set of curves that are updating dynamically that ultimately are driving our guides, which in turn drive our primitive spline. So it's just a really fast, easy way of working. So we'll say add guides in there. So now you can see we have those guides based on those curves. So we can hide the curves. We don't need to see those anymore. And if we hit our preview button here, you can see that we get a few little, um, little hairs in there. If we jump back to our primitives tab and we start to increase the density of that, you know, we start to get a lot of hair in our scene, but it's not really following those guide curves. And the reason it's not following those guide curves is because their CV count is only set to five. There's not enough precision or control vertices going down that um, primitive spline to capture the detail. So what we'll do is we'll start to increase this. So if you put 10, it starts to look a little wavy. You get up to 20. Again, wavier still. So you try to find a balance of how high you want this to go to capture the detail of, of those without getting too slow. So obviously the higher you go, the faster it's going to be, but then at the cost of speed or the, the more precise it's going to be, but the slower it's going to get. So let's just go ahead and keep this up to something like, I don't know, 60 for this example. That, that looks pretty good. Now we don't need to see those guides anymore so we can hide that off. So now we've got this looking pretty cool. And obviously if we play it back, you know, now that XGen's threaded, it actually works and the preview looks pretty good. And you can see that we get this really nice interaction of that hair with, with the back of our girl. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to randomize this a little bit more. So we're going to use the modifiers to do this. And this is, this is really the power of XGen. It's the ability to get your base groom and then start to procedurally layer modifiers and stack different effects on top of these. And we're going to do a cut effect and we're going to do a, um, a noise effect on this guy. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say cut. So we'll, we'll, we'll grab that cut and we'll hit OK on that guy. So you can see the cut is going to just trim these back. Maybe we'll put this up to something like a value of 15 to kind of just pull those, those little ends back a little bit. That looks pretty good. And we're going to add onto this another one that's going to be a noise. So right now, the noise is, and we'll put this up to a pretty high value so you can see what's going on. It's, it's hitting every single hair the same way. It's more noisy at the tip than it is at the root. So we're going to get some noise up, up here too. We'll, we'll kind of do something like that. Maybe we'll not have any noise at the very beginning. And then maybe a little bit less noise as it gets toward the tip there. So I want, you know, a good bit of noise sort of in that region. But I really don't want this to hit every hair. So XGen has the ability to define stray hairs. A percentage of hairs can get defined as stray and then we can query those stray hairs independently in expressions. And this again is super, super powerful inside of XGen. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our description and we're going to set our stray percentage to something like 10. So 10% of our hairs are now considered stray. Now I'm going to write an expression for magnitude. Instead of just having a, a value, I'm going to define an individual value for strays and then a, a separate value for anything that's not a stray. So this is really easy. We've defined the strays. So we've got those guys just sitting. So you just say stray brackets, and then what, what, what's it going to be equal to? So it's going to be 10 for the strays, and it's going to be a value of 1 for the non-strays. So we hit return there, and you can see that, you know, 10% of my hair now has a really high magnitude, and then 90% of my hair has this low magnitude. So if I increase the value on the low magnitude, you can see they change. But these ones that are considered strays, like that's a stray and that's a stray. Watch what happens when I change this end value. Those, those strays aren't changing their shape. But if I go back and change that stray shape to something like, you know, a, lower, a slightly lower value, something like 5, they change. So we're going to leave that up there at a pretty high value, something like 10. But I'll drop that frequency you know, a little bit lower to a slightly lower frequency, something like that. So we're just sort of pulling a few of those guys out to give me these little random, these little random bits and in, in, in pieces there. And at any time I can go back and adjust that stray percentage and say, you know what, only 3% are strays or 15% are strays. So you have unlimited amount of control when you start to layer these modifiers together, using those strays to kind of go in here and really start to fine tune the look and feel of this guy. You can start to get something that looks very natural, very realistic. And then obviously if we increase our primitive count up to something like 200 or, or even something really high like 500 and then drop that, that width down a little bit, you know, you start to get 
something that looks quite good in viewport 2.0. Even before we commit to a render, we start to get something that looks really pretty good. And obviously it all plays back now because of all the performance improvements that happened in 2016. So that's just a quick example of how we can use XGen in conjunction with NHair to start to get a dynamically moving braided ponytail using a couple of those modifiers to add in some nice, subtle, fine detail on the ends. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Thanks a lot for checking out Maya Mondays. Please subscribe. I do, um, I do tutorials. Go back through the old old stack of stuff that I've done. It's not just X-Gen stuff. There's modeling stuff, dynamic stuff, animation stuff. There's a ton of different videos I've made over the years. So um, dig through there and maybe you'll find something cool that you like. Thanks again for watching everybody. Cheers.